The city is a maze of back streets, hidden paths, and forbidden access. Each newly found road is a chance discovery. Each dirt track the possible route to a moment that moves your life on. So each walk is a potential adventure. Each step is a sideways glance into both the heart of darkness and the garden of delights. Each time you set foot in the city, you are stepping into the known, the unknown, the sanctuary, and the abyss. It is only after you have written so many descriptions of the city that you come to realize that your description of the city is an actual city. An accident of syntax or a spelling mistake can take what you have described and alter its architecture subtly but indelibly. That the city you have written is actually a city that you have designed has only dawned on you recently. The decent thing to do, the only thing to do, is write down in your scratchy, illegible hand what words the city continues to show you, and what words you want the city to contain. Hell is a core centre. Believe me, I know. The average call lasts 2.5 minutes, with a two-second space between calls. You are permitted two closely monitored 10-minute breaks in an eight-hour shift. Remember to smile. You're entertainers, not salespeople, the managers tell you. But don't forget you're here to sell. Good morning. Welcome to wherever. My name is Irrelevant. How can I help today? There you are. That's all done for you. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Goodbye, Mr. Mrs. Whatever. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for your call. We at wherever look forward to hearing from you again soon. One, two... Good morning. Welcome to wherever. My name is Irrelevant. How can I help today? Hell is a call centre. At the start of each day, Sisyphus returns to his rock. Same rock, same hill. But in the call center, you hot seat. You sit somewhere new every day, with someone new sat opposite and beside you. Don't even think of getting to know your colleagues. They'll be moved as soon as you learn their name. And all you really have in common with them is the fact that you share a few feet of office space every day anyway. Hell is a call center. Believe me, I know. Purgatory and the seven levels of hell, all tied to a workstation where the ethic is, let's have fun boys and girls, let's reach for the sun. Endless loop, eternal return, push your rock uphill and then watch it roll down again. What did you do with your life? And what did you learn? writing of the city involves its collapse in every physical and mental way. This deconstruction allows the palimpsest of noises, voices and indentations to be excavated and new possibilities and their meanings to be withdrawn. Unconnected, other than through a collection of coincidences and a circumstance of place, these unobjects reveal how they were unrealized in their past space. But wearing a present face, these things become real in all of the imaginings of those who see them. 
this is a rewrite of potential, a redrafting of the traces evident in the archaeological debris of the unmade city. When one walks a city, one experiences the sensory past and present. Here is a building built in your grandfather's time. Here is a school where the architect who shaped the future city was educated. Here, invisible beneath the ground, is a castle or a mass grave or an ancient spring. To walk a city is to engage in a conversation with place and space. If one chooses not to engage, one may walk head down and see only the ground. But the ground beneath your feet is the very page where the words are written, performing the language with every step you take. The city is palimpsest, overwritten by each walker and each new generation, but always containing traces of the past. Foreign and forgotten languages fall beneath the feet and rise in the memories of buildings built up in the metropolis. The older men set their names in the foundation stones. The builders leave their signs with every chisel mark, with every inch of concrete. The city is a concept and a construct. It is born, grows, declines, regenerates, dies. It is luxurious and dilapidated, gorgeous and grotesque. If it is not all things to all people, it is at least the container of all the secrets and stories of all the people who have walked the streets and hoped for something more than the little place they have found themselves in within the restraints of these two distinct cities, the one that is their own and the one that is the others. It remembers all the love affairs, all the deceits, all the joys and glories and deaths of all those who have settled here. It remembers and echoes the story of your grandfather courting your grandmother. It remembers the day your ancestor first set foot on this ground. It remembers the hour you were born and even then set aside a space for you in life and in death. Your relationship with the city is forever. All your secrets contained in the ground to be rewritten and read out loud by tomorrow's flaneur. Sometimes it seems the city and its wasteful ways is designed solely for those who have a bird's eye view on all that the city offers and all that it takes away. This space exists between one place and another, it is not a thing in itself, it is the space in between, it is the inference, it is the meaning written between the lines, it is the trace of places that have been and gone, it carries on, this space exists in the corner of your eye but your full gaze hides it, this is the undercarriage of the city, that which without the city could not be, and which with the city could not fathom. If you look down at your feet and follow only the instinct of your few blind steps, you will find your way here, from out of nowhere to eternal return, eternally recurring in the non-space, in the non-secretur. 
This is the space that exists outside of knowledge and reverts to simple knowing. It is here because you know it is here. It exists because you believe it exists. How is it possible to be lonely in a city of 250,000 people? The city itself is an oxymoron, a space built to house the mob and designed to keep them apart. In a street of eight houses, I know only one neighbour by name. The others receive and give cursory hellos, then pass into the void space of our mutual no knowledge of each other. The city is an accumulation of grids, numbers, formulae and experience. A perfection of mind over matter. Essentially each city fails because each of us fails. In small ways, in bigger ways, we fail to comprehend that the city is isolation, control. We in the city perpetuate our own prisons in the belief that the sheer number of people brings us closer together. We still believe in the concept of safety in numbers, when in reality the truth is that it's just easier to be lost in the crowd, to simply become a number, to be overlooked and forgotten. Loneliness is not a physical fact in the city, rather it is a mental state, a state of being because of a belief in non-being. Each building stands apart from its neighbour. If you scratch just beneath the surface of this city, you find that the bones of this town's past reveal evidence of the Leviathan. Here Hobbes is put into practice. Military might matched with industrial strength. Economic ideology backed up with gunboats in the harbour. The high wall that frames a football field was once the north wall of the local army barracks where we played football against opposing teams, opposed once drilled together until their feet were rolled. The city was the belly of the beast. From here the military industrial complex was armed, watered and fed, 
Here is the group of buildings where the victualling was done, now arranged as flats for rich out-of-towners. But industry has moved on and the post-industrial city has been ruined by its former self. The gunboats are mostly all gone and with them the shipbuilders and shipwrights who occupied this space and made it viable. The highs of industry and activity have been bartered away. All that remains are the skeletal objects occasionally found where they were and where we are now. Some say the Leviathan died a timely death, but if you look west you can see that the monster simply shed her bass skin for a present one which has a better fit. theatre of memory. Its stones and statues are the tokens that the city raises to remember and to be remembered by. Entropic, given to changes in meaning. What was once set in stone to record a moment of rising empire is now a memory of a fallen imperium. What was given to me one thing now means another, something alien but familiar. A lie unfolded in bits of truth. Children cannot locate the memories of their parents. The father can pass down anecdotes, stories and versions of an event, but they happen to and only for him. Some might seek to record the conversation, to set in stone what happened. Perhaps if the father is remembered, there is some hope against death. So the city sets stones in place, traces its history across its landscape, makes its space available for memory. Drake looks out to sea, for other Plymouths, other things. Pirate, privateer, admiral, courtier. Mayor, water bringer, thief. Scott faces south, faces forever his own death and never quite dies. The statue implies victory. If we can hold this moment still, it can last forever. But stones, like photographs, are doomed to fail, to fade, to forget. The actors recite lines written and rewritten, recasting roles that others have played before.
relevance of the age is remembered on the stage, mistaken for an original adaptation. My city is a weeping wound, an open sore. To test myself, sometimes I peel back the scab just as it almost heals, and take great pleasure in watching the fabric of my city fail. The one constancy of my city is the certainty that no matter how well the new constructions go, and how well received is the new architecture, I can always be counted on to create havoc and chaos in any instant of my choosing. Sometimes I dwell high in the tower blocks that I built with my joy, but mostly you will find me down in the shadows of the shadows, down below the line that separates habitat from sewage works. My city is a reminder of all the times I have promised one thing and done another. My city is a list of sins and crimes. My city is the best of the worst of times, a good opening line with alternative endings. The wound leaks. Puss seeps through the streets, back alleys and unused lanes. The city itself contains abuses indelible in the blueprint of its original plans. Such a thing demands our fullest attention, and I mention this only out of courtesy. The city is a complicated space, made up of hanging gardens, streets floating in the air, peoples of a thousand languages, hand signals, swooping seagulls, dried in chewing gum, cars under tarpaulin, cats ignoring their owners, banks come pubs, churches hosting poetry clubs. The pace of the city is different for all those involved, of course, depending largely on the uneven amount of time on Earth given to us all. <laughs> 